Hello everyone. So today I want to show you a simple design that could be used to understand customer feedback at scale. So this approach combines the power of continuous queries and large language models. So it allows you to extract the sentiments of each feedback um, with a prompt and just a simple API call. So while some of these services are still in preview, I do believe it's important to start experimenting this sort of stuff. Um, and by assessing the robustness of the solution and uh, potentially moving towards live implementation in the near future. Oh, by the way, if you haven't heard about continuous queries, I suggest um, check out my last video on this topic. Uh, that's the place I explained what it is and how it can potentially save 50% of your data engineering effort. So the, the key reason I'm excited about this combination is because it's simple. Uh, and it makes it much, much easier to implement and maintain. So here are a list of the topics I will be covering today. So, and let's get started. If you look at this design, at the very beginning is the source system. So that's where the customer feedbacks are stored. It could be a database or it could be anything else, right? The key thing in here is these data gets ingested into a BigQuery table in the form of a uh, a, a text column, right? So keep in mind, it doesn't really matter whether this is uh, real-time or batch because continuous queries can work with both and it will listen to these in the form of events and push those into the PubSub message queue. The Cloud Run service in here is deployed to access the large language models, uh, basically to extract, in this case, very simple sentiments such as whether the feedback is good or bad, right? And that can then get sent to another pops up message queue. This is where the options gets opened up again, because you have typically two paths. One, you can put it back into BigQuery to do further analysis to see exactly what is going on with those feedbacks. Or you can listen to specific feedback, such as, uh, let's say the customer had a bad experience and you want to follow up with the customer to send them an email to say, hey, what actually happened uh, in why did you have a bad experience in there to hopefully uh, retain the customer for longer, for example. So what I've done to start with is to uh, create a script to generate some synthetic data. This is basically just a bunch of positive feedback examples and a bunch of negative feedback examples. Um, and then I actually broke down, I want to break them down into regions, right? So this code basically generates 1,000 of these records and uh, send them into BigQuery. Just kind of assimilate the customer feedback from, let's say, a website, right? So if you look at the data, this is what it looks like. Uh, I've only selected Kent in this case as a county. Uh, if you look at this one, you've got emails. You can use anything else. So in your case, you might have a custom ID. Um, which is better. And then you've got timestamps in this case and when this was collected and the region and the actual feedback in free text form, right? On the continuous query part, you just need a simple query like this. You set up a source, which is your table in this case with a few columns. Uh, keep in mind, feedback is the one that with the free text. Um, and then you want to set a target and the options in this case is the cloud pop sub with a topic name. So this will basically listen to the table 24 seven once it's deployed, and then it will continuously send the data into your pops up topic in the form of events. On the Cloud Run service part, I've deployed this, as you can see, as a Cloud Run function. This is just easier so we can show you everything, including the code in the browser. Um, in here, I've set a few uh, variables in here. So just keep in mind, if you're gonna deploy this on production, template all of these things as environment variables. So um, I'm using the Gemini 1.5 flash model because it's quick um, and it's good enough. Uh, I've also set a prompt specifically for this model. So keep in mind, it depends on the model you use. The prompt can be very different. So in this case, the output is still quite verbose. So I have to give it additional text like this to make sure it doesn't return too much information for me other than saying whether it's good or bad, right? So. Below here is very simple. It's just a generative model class. So you put a model in, and then uh, in the function uh, feedback, you extract the information that coming from this message. So this is coming from the continuous query, uh, pops up message topic. And then uh, you generate the content based on a prompt and the uh, feedback free text, right? 
So I'm just keeping it simple in here. I'm, I'm logging it as a, as a free text so I can just find it and then I can do some analysis on it as I uh, extract this, this as JSON. So in here, I'm just stripping out any white spaces so I can actually uh, have a relatively clean output in this particular case with this model. In the logs, you can see the output contains the feedback category, the message, and the region. Uh, so you see, you see after the uh, extraction is only got the category of good or hopefully bad left, right? So I'll show you in a minute what the distribution looks like. And data canvas is not becoming my favorite tool for this kind of analysis. You can see I've generated some text again to let it show me the uh, the distribution of the extracted sentiment. Um, so keep in mind, they didn't generate all of this for me. It generated uh, like 90%. I have to add the lower and uh, in cap in here because I didn't do much cleanup in the code. So here I'm just doing a, a little bit more cleanup to make it look a little bit better. So you can see here, uh, we've got the distribution of all of the different regions and then with the feedback, whether it's good or bad, right? And, and counting of how many we've got in here based on the extraction we did earlier. And what's very interesting here, last time I didn't see this, is in the visualization, you can actually uh, use the Gemini prompt as well to give you, you know, some kind of a good analysis. You can see uh, what I've typed in here is basically just show it by region and for each region, uh, give me the good and bad, but also sort it based on uh, the one with the uh, most to the least, right, on the feedback. So you can see here I've got Kent as number one that has majority of these good and bad uh, uh, feedbacks and then ranked all the way to the other side. Um, this, you can even tell it color, right? So you see use green as good and slightly red color as bad. You can just use, rather than say slightly, you can just say red color. So you can you can even change that, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, and now you can see the distribution of the uh, sentiment extracted from the LMs. Next, I want to talk a bit about some of the improvements made actually still in the preview for continuous queries. So when I tried this yesterday, um, you can see that in the last try, I was able to deploy five concurrent drops. So if you remember, in my last video previously, I was quite concerned about, I was only able to deploy one job with 50 slots, and that looks like it's been lifted into uh, 50. So now the formula appears to be every 10 slots, you can deploy one job. It might look like a small change to, you know, before it was one, now it's five, so the starting cost is still pretty high. But I think uh, because it can be adjusted right from from the concurrency which means there i'll have no doubt google will be making more improvements on this when it goes to ga right so but this is actually very good news because now it's already comparing to what we had before this is already 5x so with 100 slots you can actually deploy 10 applications um, using continuous queries i don't know how many of you have used or tried the ml.generate text function in bigquery this is a recent addition that allows you to call some of the large language models behind the scenes by using just a BigQuery function. For any of you who have tried or used this, you might be asking me, why am I extracting all of the information using continuous queries and put that into pops up and make the API calls on the other side using the Cloud Run service? Um, why not just use this function, right? It just does it for you. Well, I actually tried it and I'll explain why I don't think this is a solution I like at the moment. If you look at one of these queries I tried, right? So this is a the same table uh, I'm using on the other side, right? For continuous queries. If you look at what I'm doing here, I'm actually limiting the uh, results only into 10 records. So in here, I'm using the Gemini Pro version. It looks like that one's the GA because I can raise the quotas on it. Um, the default quota is actually quite low. So what happened was, when I tried this, you can see there's only 10 records, right? Um, I'm not having anything more than 10 in this case. What I found is, look how long this took. This took four minutes and 41 seconds. So I triple checked this was not overwhelming the quota on the other side for this pro model. And it was still hanging in there for four and a half minutes with no obvious reasons. I don't know why, but there's no logs. Uh, there's, it doesn't fail. Um, the quota says it's got capacity, uh, and they just house. So in my view, at the current stage, I know it's in preview, but it's very, very difficult to debug on exactly what is going on. 
And that's why I've, after hours of trying this stuff, I've just given up. You can see here in the quotas, this is for the pro model. I've raised this to 50. Um, and a lot of the time you see in here, I didn't hit the quota and it was nowhere near the quota. But even in those scenarios, uh, from my experience of trying this for hours, it was not reliable at the moment because sometimes it gives me, um, you know, we process one record or 10 records takes five seconds, but sometimes it took like, like the one you saw four and five minutes. So with this kind of uh, pattern, I really can't trust at this stage uh, on, on this thing because it's very difficult to debug if, uh, and it just hounds, right? Now let's talk about cost. So in the last one or two years, so initially, uh, large language models was quite expensive, right? But in the last year specifically, it has been reduced significantly in cost. Um, and now what that means is deploying applications like this at scale is now becoming feasible. It's not just ChatGPT kind of lowering the price, and this is like happening in the entire industry on all the LLM models. So in this case, if you look at the German at 1.5 Flash, which is quite a nice model, is 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 relatively small, but it's very fast and it's very cheap, right? If you look at the actual cost in here, um, with this cost model, you can actually run a let's say processing an average of one million. A customer feedback with a cost of under three dollars. Yeah, so I think it's something really worth thinking about, trying out, experiment, and even deploy some of these things to see what it looks like and whether it's actually help your business or not. Hopefully, this content is useful. Uh, if you'd like to see more, uh, follow me on LinkedIn or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you very much. I'll see you next time.